Have you guys ever looked in the mirror and thought, damn, I need to learn how to fight? Well, don't worry, because in today's video, I'm going to teach you guys exactly how to fight as a beginner. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys the basics and fundamentals of boxing. I'm going to be teaching you guys your stance, your footwork, and how to actually throw punches with the correct technique. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So first of all, I'm going to be teaching you guys the stance. Your stance is one of the most important things in boxing because if you do not have your stance right, then you will not be able to box efficiently. So to start off with your stance, you must realize that if you are left-handed, your right foot must always be forward. But if you are right-handed, your left foot must always be forward. So keep this in mind. Now, to make sure your stance is correct, what you want to do is you want to make sure you're on your toes and about slightly over shoulder width. What this is going to do is going to make you be able to move around swiftly, but make sure your legs are not also too wide because if they're too wide, what happens is you become more stiff. But if they're too close, what happens is you become too easy to be pushed. The way you can actually test if your stance is correct is if someone pushes you, you must be able to not fall back, but at the same time, not be too stiff at the same time. So to make sure, stay on your toes and be bouncing forward. Just as you can see in people that do fencing, they're always on their toes because they want to be stable. So make sure you're on your toes and you're moving around swiftly. So make sure you practice this bouncing move and you're able to move as well. Now that we've got the stance out of the way, I'm going to take it to the second most important thing, which is your guard. If your guard is not correct, you are going to get your ass knocked out. So let me teach you guys how to get your guard correct. So actually, there is multiple guards you can take, but if you want to play it safe, I recommend you use this guard. So what you want to do is you actually want to keep both your hands closed at all times and keep them on slightly cheekbone level slash jaw level, but make sure you do not open your elbows like a chicken because what this will do is it will allow your opponent to actually hit you, whether it's the liver or the kidney, and you're going to drop like a headless chicken. So make sure you keep your elbows tucked in and make sure your, your hands are tightly on your face and slightly keep your shoulders up at the same time too. Now, what this will allow you to do is when you throw punches, you're going to be a lot more protected with your shoulders up than if your shoulders are down. You can see my face is not covered. So once you've got this down, I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to show you guys how it looks when you combine it with the stance. So as you can see, I've got my, I've got my guard up now and I've also got my stance just about shoulder, shoulder width, but slightly open more. And now what I want you to practice is keep your stance and your guard at the same time and stop bouncing around and see if you can move while keeping these two things the same. So make sure you don't drop your hands and make sure your stance is always good at the same time. All right, now for the fun part, let's get into the punches. So starting off with the most important punch, the jab. Now to perform the jab, what you want to do is you want to get your actual non-dominant hand now, bear with me when I say this. You might be like, why should I use my non-dominant hand? The reason is because the jab is actually not meant to be a hard punching punch. It's actually meant to be a one that you open your opponent, you check him, you feel him out. So then your other punch with your stronger hand is there for the knockout and, you know, for the most brutal shot. So starting off with the jab, what you want to do is make sure your stance is ready and make sure your shoulders are up, everything's set. Now, when you want to throw the jab, what you actually want to do is you want to extend your elbow just like that but make sure at the same time you're not actually flaring your elbows out like a chicken as i said earlier don't make this chicken mistake so what you want to do is extend your arm just like that you see i'm fully protected at all times with this other hand as well so as you can see bang you extend your arm do not chicken your arm like that extend straight and as soon as you throw your punch you want to bring it back to the guard instantly so bang 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 all right, secondly, the second most important punch, the cross. Let me show you guys what a cross actually looks like before we get into it. So effective cross should look something like this. Now, to perform a cross, what you want to do is, unlike the jab which comes from the front of your body, this one actually comes from the back and most of the power comes from the back leg. So to perform the cross, what you want to do is, as you're in your stance, ready to throw, you quickly extend and twist the back of your leg as well. I will show you guys what my foot and leg looks like because this is very important. If your leg is not twisting like this, then your punch will not have power and it will not be efficient. So as you can see, as I throw the punch, you can see I'm twisting my leg with it and I'm actually not telegraphing. Telegraphing means loading up your punches. This is what a cross looks like if you're loading it up. As you can see, the opponent will see the punch coming. But if you do not telegraph, the punch comes out quickly and more efficiently and your opponent will be less likely to see it. 
So make sure you practice this punch because it is very efficient. Now, for the serious punch, the hook, which is my favorite punch at the moment, this one is very important because this punch is the one that usually lands the most knockouts in boxing and most martial arts sports. Now, to perform a hook, what you want to do is you want to make sure your stance is up. I mean, your guard is up. Sorry, bear with me. You want to make sure your guard is up. And all you want to do is you want to quickly throw a punch in a hook motion while your jaw is connected to your shoulder to make sure that you are not that you're not unprotected at all times. So make sure to throw this. You make a smooth U with your arms. So now, as you can see, if I show you from this angle, you will see that I will still be protected from this side with my shoulders up. However, if my shoulders are down and I'm throwing a hook like that, what happens is my opponent can easily hit me and punch me and knock me out. So what you want to do is shoulders up and throw a hook just like that. Make sure your hook isn't too wide or too short because you could actually injure yourself. So let me show you one more time for the hook. And as you can see, I don't know if you've noticed this, but when I'm throwing the hook, my left leg is also twisting. So watch this. When I throw the hook, I'm not keeping myself flat footed. I'm actually twisting my leg and my foot at the same time to add more power to the hook. And lastly, for another deadly knockout punch, we've got the uppercut. Now the uppercut is an extremely deadly punch if you know how to use it correctly. So I'm gonna show you guys how to throw an uppercut. So the first thing you must be able to do is make sure you've got your stance correct. I know I've said this many times, but if you have not got your stance correct, you will not be able to throw this punch well. So now that you've got your stance ready, your arms are up, what you actually want to do is you want to twist to your front side of your body as if you're slipping, and while you're here now, what you want to actually do is twist again with your legs and lower back and hips and come up. So once you're here, you want to move up. And as you can see, my legs twisted. And I'm going to take a step back so you guys can actually see this from a better perspective and angle. So as you can see, I'm here. I twist down and I come up again with a punch. Now make sure you really scoop this punch when you come up to get the most power possible. All right, now that we've got the fundamentals of boxing ready and hopefully you guys have practiced this in your room or wherever you are, we're going to move on to the next step and I'm actually going to show you guys combinations for you guys to throw. Now, I'm not going to show too many boxing combinations on here because I've actually got a home boxing program that I'm leaving down below in the description which will teach the basics of boxing and also for amateurs as well that want to learn new combos. It teaches everything, the fundamentals and even more if you guys want to check that out. But without further ado, I'm going to show you guys some combinations that you guys can practice at home. All right, starting with this basic combination that I believe everybody needs to notice because this is actually so simple but deadly at the same time because of how efficient it is. And this is actually one of my favorite combos, so I'm going to show it to you guys right now. As you can see, this combo is a double jab and a cross. The reason why this combo is so efficient is because when you come forward with a double jab, your opponent is already moving back. And now your cross is hitting them right in the jaw, cracking them and hopefully knocking them out. So to perform this combo, all you've actually got to do is throw a jab, bring the jab back halfway and throw it again with more force than the first time. And then come in with the cross. This is a very simple combo, but it's very effective. So make sure you're implementing this. And the last combo I'm going to be showing you guys is another simple but deadly combo, which I've actually shown on my social media many times. And I think you guys need to see this one. So I'm going to perform it for you guys in full speed. And then I'm going to slow it down and break it down for you guys. As you can see, I threw a jab, a cross and a hook. The reason why this is so efficient is because they're giving your opponent many punches and they will not be expecting it too much. So to start off, what you're going to want to do is throw a jab, come in with a cross and then finish with the left hook. You could actually also add the uppercut to this one if you're feeling it, but most people will not have the confidence to throw uppercut since it's actually a pretty hard punch to throw and it takes a lot of confidence to throw it. So I hope you guys really enjoyed these combos that I gave you guys in today's video. And also, home boxing program in the description below. We're at 10K members at the moment and we're going to scale it up to 100K this year. So make sure you guys go get the program now before the price increases.